Why is concrete so needy when it's all alone? When the wear of nature and the elements break it down, cracks show and its integrity crumbles. Rebar can help, but it only supports the concrete after the damage has been done. Concrete is the foundation for so many of our buildings, our bridges, and our walls. If those structures break down after a small crack, then what good is it? Concrete structures must be able to expand and contract during daily temperature swings to avoid tearing themselves apart. But how do we predict concrete strength and durability? Concrete's flexural strength is tested by casting beams and then testing them in specifically calibrated machines. Once the beam is placed into the machine, a ram slowly forces the center of the beam downward, causing it to bend. In this particular beam test, a cut is made in the bottom middle of the cured beam before it is placed in the testing machine. The cut creates a weak spot that forces the beam to crack in the middle. The legs of the crack opening gauge are straddled over the crack and attached to the beam. The gauge can detect the slightest opening of the cut, which indicates a crack is forming. The load being resisted by the beam and the opening of the cut are recorded and documented on a graph. The load values go up the left side and the width of the crack mouth goes from 0 to 4 millimeters across the bottom. First, the test measures how much load it takes to cause a crack to start forming. The peak of the curve represents where the beam begins to develop a microscopic crack. Then the test continues while measuring the width of the crack mouth opening. Simultaneously, the beam's resistance to the force of the ram is being measured. If the beam continues to resist the pressure from the ram, the test will continue until the crack mouth has opened 4 millimeters. In the case of an unreinforced or plain concrete beam, by the time the crack mouth has opened less than the thickness of a credit card, the beam fails completely and the test stops. The beam has lost all ability to carry load with a crack opening of less than 1 millimeter. Let's compare and contrast the strength and durability of unreinforced concrete against concrete reinforced with two different doses of Steel X. Here is a look at the results of the unreinforced concrete beam again. Earlier, we saw the peak of unreinforced concrete beam curve, which represents the maximum load the plain concrete beam can take before it starts to crack. Next, we need to look at the area under the curve. The area under the curve, now filled with red, represents the durability of the concrete. How much punishment can it take? Concrete must endeavor to withstand whatever work it was placed to do. Unfortunately for concrete, it was born to only be punished. The jobs given to concrete are so numerous, pavements, walls, bridges, floors. While concrete is doing its job as a driving surface or holding back soil or sustaining the load of a skyscraper, it also has to withstand the environment. It has to be able to expand and contract during daily temperature swings without tearing itself apart. It has to withstand impacts and chemical attacks. Concrete's ability to do all these things and remain in good shape is durability. Durability has many factors, but the ability to resist cracking under a load is likely the most significant of them all. Remember, fractions of a millimeter are invisible to the naked eye as we transition to looking at the graph of a low-dose Steel X reinforced concrete beam test. First, it is essential to note the difference in the load it takes to initiate a crack in plain concrete versus the concrete beams reinforced with Steel X. Pieces of Steel X are 1 inch long high strength twisted miniature rebar that are mixed into the fresh concrete while it is still in the mixer. Once the concrete is placed and it hardens, Steel X locks in and reinforces every cubic inch of the concrete in every direction. Steel X's ability as a reinforcement can be clearly seen in the increased load it takes to cause the beam to crack. Now we continue the test. While the load increases and the crack is forced open to 4 millimeters, the Steel X rebar pieces embedded inside the concrete and holding tight across the crack are continuously resisting the crack growth. Therefore, the line does not fall back to zero like it did with plain concrete. The large increase in the area under the line represents the second part of the increased durability Steel X imparts on concrete. Even at a low dose of Steel X, there is more than 50 times increase in the area under the line in the graph. Next, we can look at the results of a higher dose of Steel X shown in blue. It takes nearly two and a half times the energy to initiate a crack. 
After a minute decrease, the line begins to climb above the level it took to form the initial microscopic crack. That means the embedded steel X is even stronger than the beam was initially. The line continues to climb all the way out to a crack opening the thickness of one and a half credit cards. Then it resists the crack growth all the way out to four millimeters with only slight step downs along the way. In the end, the beam can still carry twice the load it took to break the plain concrete beam in two. Let's look at all three graphs overlaid, one on top of the other, to see the differences in durability of plain concrete versus steel X reinforced concrete at two different dosages. The difference in the area under the green line is tens of times greater than plain concrete for the low dose steel X and hundreds of times greater under the blue line for the higher dosage of steel X. The larger area represented by the steel X reinforced concrete shows that it is far more durable than the concrete not protected by steel X. By forcing open a badly cracked beam, it is possible to see the steel X bridging the crack. These test results show that steel X reinforced concrete is far superior to plain concrete, but it also has an advantage over other types of reinforcement. For example, traditional rebar does not start supporting concrete until a one millimeter wide crack has opened in the concrete. Again, that's wide enough you could stick a credit card in the crack. Rebar's inability to support concrete at the microscopic cracking level is why we see so much rusty exposed rebar. A crack forms, then corrosive liquids penetrate the cracks and attack the rebar. A large rebar grid is a reservoir for corrosion and continuously accepts all the rust producing chemicals. The rebar rusts, swells, pushes from the inside, and pops off its concrete covering. As more rebar is exposed, the process accelerates causing the whole system to fail. In contrast, Steel X increases the load required to cause the initial crack and it reinforces the concrete much earlier. In the micro-cracking phase, when the crack is still invisible and watertight, as we saw in the graph above, it also continues to support the concrete to at the least a four millimeter crack width. In many applications, Steel X can be used as the only concrete reinforcement. However, employing Steel X in addition to rebar in projects where Steel X cannot be used alone is physical insurance against early failure, especially for taxpayer funded infrastructure and industrial projects. For more information, visit SteelXRebar.com. Call 951-360-0852 or email steelx at badgerforms.com.